as we said before, the symbol on the left-hand side of this equation is the cost function. It represents the relationship between the amount of output, let's say 15 bushels of corn, and the cost. The right-hand side is an algebraic expression of it. And the price of fertilizer times the amount of fertilizer plus the price of water times the amount of water. And the price of fertilizer, I mean the amount of fertilizer depends on the amount of corn that you're going to produce and the amount of water also depends on the amount of corn that you're going to produce. But we have no idea how to graph F versus Q or W versus Q. It's even hard to figure out what they would be numerically. If, if I give you a particular Q, like 15 bushels of corn, what's F and what's W? That's a really hard question to answer and we, we've just discovered how to do that. But you have to graph W and F, you have to graph the 15 bushel isochron, you have to know the price of water, you have to know the price of fertilizer, you have to divide one by the other to get the, the slope of the total cost curve, and you have to find out which total cost curve minimizes total cost and then you can then you can find what the amount of water is for 15 bushels of corn and what the amount of fertilizer is for 15 bushels of corn and then knowing those you could you could plug fertilizer into here and you could plug water into here and you could calculate it but that's a really hard thing to do in order to get and it still doesn't tell us graphically what f of q and w of q are like, and therefore it doesn't give us a graphical, a way of graphically getting the, a picture of the cost function. So we're going to have to simplify this problem. The pro this problem is a problem where you have complete freedom of picking whatever fertilizer and water you want to minimize cost. And this is just too hard of a problem to solve graphically. <clears throat> I mean, it's too hard. It's too hard of a problem to be able to allow us to get a graphical picture of C of Q. We can solve the problem graphically, and I just did, but we still don't know in general what C of Q looks like. We're going to consider instead a simpler problem. C of Q equals P F times one particular fixed value of f, I'm going to call it f0, plus pw times w of q. So the only thing I've changed is what I wanted to calculate was f of q, but that was too hard. So instead I have here a fixed value of fertilizer. This second problem is quite different than the first. In the second problem, the firm can't be anywhere in the FW plane. The firm has made some prior commitment to buy F not pounds of fertilizer, not more, not less. And this lack of freedom means that the second problem is much easier to solve than the first problem. We have names for these two problems. The first problem is called a long run problem. And the second problem is called a short run problem. To be precise, the short run is a situation where all inputs, except for one, are fixed. The other one is called the variable input. So in the example, fertilizer is the fixed input and W, water, is the variable input. And then, continuing in the short run, fixed cost 
is just the cost of the fixed input, namely PF times F naught. And variable cost is the cost of the variable input, namely the price of water times W, which is a function of Q. You can you can write this PW times W. But since water is variable, it's going to depend on the amount of coin output. It's completely arbitrary for our purposes whether you pick fertilizer as fixed and water as variable, which is what I did, or whether you pick fertilizer as variable and water as fixed. There's no particular reason why one should be fixed and the other should be variable. Now I've introduced sh short run as just a simpler problem than the long run, but it does have some practical applications. There are situations in which a firm has signed a contract, let's say a building lease, which requires it to buy a certain amount of an input, like a building space, for a certain amount of time. Now, it would actually be rare that the firm would also promise never to buy any more of that input. These contracts usually require a firm to buy no less than a certain amount, but they don't say the firm can't buy more, let's say by leasing some other building from somebody else. So there's still some artificiality in the economist's view of the short run, but it's not completely artificial. In our example, since we only have two inputs, we're just going to have one fixed and one variable. So the general definition that all inputs are fixed except for just one of them, we're really not going to see examples of more than one input being fixed. But if a firm had five inputs, the short run is defined to be a situation where four of those are fixed and only one of them is variable. Now, the reason we went to the short run is to make it possible to eventually graph C versus Q. So let's see how, that, how this helps us to achieve that goal. We've got two parts. We've got the fixed cost part and the variable cost part. So let's think about pictures of the fixed cost and variable cost. It's actually pretty easy to draw a graph of fixed cost. Fixed cost is just PF times F naught. And we're graphing versus Q, because ultimately that's the whole idea of the, the cost function, is to graph things, to graph things versus Q. I claim that the, the graph of fixed cost versus Q just looks like this. It's just completely horizontal. Because fixed cost is fixed, it doesn't vary with Q. You've, the firm is contracted to buy F naught pounds of fertilizer, no more, no less. You just multiply that by the price of fertilizer, and the price of fertilizer is fixed because this firm is a competitive firm in the input market, so it takes the price of fertilizer as fixed. So PF is fixed, F naught is fixed. If you take one fixed number, multiply by another fixed number, you get a fixed number. So it doesn't change. So the graph of fixed cost is really simple. It's just a horizontal line. Okay, so that's the, the graph of the fixed input part. How about the graph of the variable input part? Well, that's not so easy. Let's think about it. Again, we really want Q on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, we want variable cost. And variable cost is the price of water times water, which depends on Q. Price of water is fixed, so that's easy. The way that water depends on quantity is something we've actually studied before. Because here's the situation. We're using water and fertilizer to produce corn. Fertilizer is fixed. Fertilizer is the fixed input. The only thing we can change is water. That should remind you of something. That should remind you of graphs where we had water holding fertilizer fixed on the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, this is the previous chapter, on the vertical axis, we had Q. And there were two cases, the type 1 case and the type 2 case. 
type 1 case, which looked like this, and type 2 case, it was first convex and then concave. Now remember that type 1 and type 2 are not official terms. The official terms that will be used on exams are, for type 1, diminishing returns begins immediately, and for type 2, diminishing returns does not begin immediately. Now let's contrast these two types with what we want. Okay, so what we want, what we want is w as a function of q. And what we have over here is q as a function of w. Well, that's really close. In fact, all you have to do is switch the axes to, f to get w as a function of q instead of q as a function of w. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to be looking, we'll look first at type 1, and later we'll look at type 2. And we'll exploit what we know about this graph to figure out what the variable cost curve looks like. Now, it's not exactly the same as the type 1 graph flipped around, because you do have the price of water to take into account, but that's simple. That's just a constant. So here's our plan. Start with a type 1 graph. From it, figure out what variable cost looks like with, with type 1. And then we can put variable cost together with fixed cost, and that would give us total cost. Then we'll do the same thing with type 2. So that's where we're going.